So another cue that infants can use to help them identify words in fluent speech involves stressed and unstressed syllables. In particular, infants can distinguish between stressed syllables, which are the ones that have the emphasis, and unstressed syllables, which are the ones that don't. And they actually learn biases that are specific to the languages that they are picking up. So for example, English infants prefer words that begin with a stressed syllable, which is sometimes called a trochaic pattern uh, from poetic devices that don't concern us right now called trochies. Uh, but suffice it to say, they prefer words like castle. For, while French infants prefer words to end with stress, that is words that have a beyond kind of pattern. So the stress syllable is the end of it. It's called an iambic pattern, again, for poetic reasons that don't concern us. But these are biases that they will therefore use when they get a fluent stream of speech to figure out where the words are. So for example, again, English infants will prefer words to begin with stress. So if they are basically sticking a word boundary before or a stress syllable because they're like, oh, I know a word begins here, then they're going to put uh, stress before went, before castle, before goblin, before city, before very hard. These are the words that they're going to be picking out by using the strategy. And it's not so bad, right? Uh, although there are problems, right? There are words that are missed because they're not following that stress pattern, like the word beyond, right? Which actually has the opposite with stress on the final syllable. And then there are words that don't really seem to have much in the way of stress, especially when you say them in fluent speech. So we focus on uh, the part of the utterance after the comma, right, which was very hard to get to. The which was doesn't actually have a lot of stress. It certainly have especially in fluent speech, so this strategy wouldn't identify it, which and was, as separate words. So here's a question. Infants have these language-specific stress biases. How exactly do they learn them, right? Because they have to learn them since they do differ by language. And so a study by Swingley in 2005 suggested that these biases arise from the initial words that infants extract by using statistical cues like transitional probability. And so they, they use statistical cues to sort of get this initial set of words, this seed pool of words, which is sometimes called a proto-lexicon because it, a le true lexicon is word forms connected to word meaning. And this is just a word form, so it's a proto-lexicon, not yet connected to meaning, but it's a collection of words that you've been able to statistically extract. And so, for example, if this is an English proto-lexicon extracted, again, from using statistical cues like transitional probability, what you would notice is that, wow, all of the words, all of the units in this proto-lexicon begin with a stressed syllable, and so that might encourage uh, an English learner to say, oh, you know what, I can just rely on a stress initial bias to identify where words are in fluent streams of speech. So there's some evidence that this is in fact the right sequence of events. That first you sort of rely on statistical cues and then you extract or derive more uh, language specific biases like these stress cues afterwards. So Thiessen and Safran in 2003 found that if you pit Statistical and forgive the background noise for a moment. I'll be gone in just a second. There we go. So Thiessen and Safran in 2003 found that if you pit statistical cues against lexical stress cues, at six months, children prefer to rely on the transitional probability cues, the statistical cues. But at nine months, they actually prefer the lexical stress cues. So this is the order of events that are happening. Is first you use statistical cues to figure out what the patterns are of your language, what do words look like? And then afterwards, after you have that seed pool, that proto-lexicon, that's when you actually then derive things like lexical stress cues that are specific to your language.